Hi, I'm Kira McKee, retired scientist and author. Today I'm going to be talking about how to write an abstract for a scientific paper. The abstract is actually the most important part of a technical article. Successful authors put substantial effort into crafting their abstracts, which act like advertisements for their papers. Unfortunately, some authors fail to understand how important a good abstract is to the su success of their scientific article. That was one of my problems when I first began writing technical papers. Like many novices, I treated the abstract as an afterthought. I left the abstract until the last minute and then dashed off a mediocre summary composed of sentences copied from the narrative. Only much later did I understand that the abstract is one of the most important components of a scientific paper. Writing a decent abstract is not difficult if you know what information needs to be included and how to structure it. If you've never written an abstract before, you may be uncertain about what exactly goes into one. Essentially, an abstract should reflect all the parts of your paper, but in shortened form. In other words, a person reading only your abstract should be able to understand why you conducted the study, how you conducted it, what you found, and why your work is important. In general, avoid the novice's cut and paste approach when crafting your abstract and instead write a unique standalone summary. Let's now consider how to structure your abstract. Some journals may provide a template that specifies four or five sections, such as background or aim, question, methods, results, and conclusions or significance. If so, then follow those instructions. If not, then the four-part structure I'm going to describe will serve as a basic guideline. If you follow this formula, your abstract will be well organized and will contain all the essential elements. There are four main parts in which you need to answer the following questions. First, what problem did you study and why is it important? Here you want to provide background to the study, the motivation behind the study, or the specific question or hypothesis you addressed. You may be able to set the stage with one or two sentences, but sometimes it takes a longer description. Two, what methods did you use to study the problem? Here you want to give an overview of your methods. Was it a field study or a laboratory experiment? What experimental treatments were applied? Generally, you want to keep the method section brief unless it is the focus of the paper. Three, what were your key findings? When describing your results, strive to focus on the main finding and list no more than two or three points. Also, avoid ambiguous or imprecise wording. Four, what did you conclude based on these findings and what are the broader implications? This section is where you want to drive home the broader implications of your study. What is new or innovative about the findings? How do your findings affect the field of study? Are there any applications? In writing this section, however, don't state sweeping generalizations unsupported by the data or say that insights will be discussed. Another important consideration in preparing an abstract is search engine optimization, or SEO, which means including search terms that people are likely to use when looking for papers on your topic. In addition to including such terms in the title and keyword field of your paper, you want to repeat those terms contextually throughout the abstract. Such repetition is used by search engines to rank an online document. By optimizing your abstract for discovery by search engines, you can raise the ranking of your paper in a search and make it easier for, uh, for your colleagues to find it. A final point is that some journals are now in 
encouraging or even requiring enhanced abstracts, such as graphical abstracts or video abstracts. Although such abstracts uh, include additional visual components, the same basic guidelines I've covered in this video still apply. All good abstracts recapitulate the paper and contain the four key parts that I've just listed. Writing good abstracts is not an art, but a learned skill. Developing such a skill takes practice. Here's an exercise to help you develop this skill. Pick a scientific article in your field. Read the paper with the abstract covered. Then try to write an abstract based on your reading. Compare your abstract to the author's. Repeat until you feel confident. If you've not yet published a paper, this exercise will help you hone the skills necessary to write a concise and informative abstract. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay tuned for more videos about scientific writing.